Honored to be in for our pastor. For those of you who don't know me, I am George Hines, Minister George Hines, and I'll be back with more for you, but at this time, we're going to have a word from our deacon. Good morning. Good morning. I have a scripture reading for today from Psalm, Psalm chapter 7, beginning at verse 14. Behold, the wicked bring forth iniquity. Yes, he conceived trouble and bring forth falsehood. He made a pit and dug it out and, and has fallen into the ditch which he made. His trouble shall return upon his own head and his violent dealing shall come down on his own ground. The word of God for the people of God.
Amen. God is great and greatly to be praised. Indeed he is. Indeed he is. How about a round hand applause for the Lord, y'all? Let's give God a hand. Oh, we can do better than that. Give God a shout. Just because he didn't have to wake us up this morning. No, sir, he didn't have to do it. First of all, I would like to say, give an honor to God and just pray for the pastor and for those who need prayer. I pray for healing for our pastor. In the name of Jesus, most gracious Father, we come to you at this hour thanking you for all that you have done. Thank you for watching over us last night, Lord, as we slumbered. Thank you, Lord, for just forgiving us for our daily sins and giving us another chance, Lord, to make it happen again, to make a better day out of the day that we had before. Touch right now, Lord, and we want to say thank you for the healing. And we pray for the healing of our pastor, Pastor Kenneth Gooden. Thank you, Lord, for a successful surgery. And thank you, Lord, for all that you have done and all that you plan to do in our lives. Help us, Lord, to love one another more, more and more. Touch us right now for those who have come thus far, like Sister Harris, Lord, touch her right now and bless us a royalty in the fraternity that's here today. Touch right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, for the Powell family who are going through. Lord, we touch everybody that we know that's in this place and within the sound of my voice on our Facebook listenership. We ask that you touch them right now. Give the strength, Lord, back to those members who have been coming and no longer are coming, but they are still having the Facebook experience. Be with them, Lord, for they need blessings as well. These blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you, Brother Johnson. Okay, now it is time for uh, our deacons for the uh, ministry of giving. Yes, we like to say give from your heart. And, of course, God has blessed all of us, but give what you can. Brother Deacons, you don't have to get up and come around. The deacons will come to you. Just wave your hands if you need the deacons to come. Dear God, we thank you for these blessings that have been presented to you. We take these blessings, Lord, and give them to you to multiply. Touch right now for those, Lord, who had the desire to give and was not able to give. Touch right now, Lord, for those that gave and let it be a ten time fold blessing in return. These blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
We'll now hear from uh, our praise team. Amen. Let's give them a round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. They are few, but they are powerful, and they are singing for the Lord.
Yes, he's able. Don't give up on God, because God won't give up on you. If you will, let us find out what those beautiful ladies here in the white today, what they are doing and the, the purpose here. Sister Good Strong. Good morning. He told me to touch. All right. Last time they said it wasn't on. Okay. Uh, good morning to Pastor Gooden in his absence, to Minister Hines. And to all of our visitors, as always, we're so happy that you're here worshiping with us today. But today I would like to give a special welcome to the members of Zeta Psi Zeta chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated who are celebrating their 55th year of chartering. And they are here worshiping with us today. And we want to give special recognition and respect to our two remaining charter members who are with us today, and that is Mrs. Willie B. Martin, and please stand if you can, if you want to. And we have our own charter member of New Covenant Missionary Baptist Church who is with us today, and we're so happy to see her, Sister Murtis Harris. Out of our eight chartering members, these are our two that are still with us, and we are so thankful to God for their presence. And I would also ask if all the members of Zeta Psi Zeta Chapter, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated, if you would please stand at this time. Thank you, and please come back again anytime. And I also have the responsibility of reminding everyone that this is the fourth Sunday, and this is when we celebrate all of our birthday babies. So all our members who have birthdays, all right, Ms. Long, all our members who have birthdays in the month of June, please stop by after church. <laughs> please stop by after church so that you can get your birthday happy from the church. Thank you all so much. Amen. Now, I did not stand up to acknowledge someone's birthday this month. But for those who did not receive the text from the pastor on yesterday, we have been praying for the pastor. And I'm going to read to you what he texts. I don't think everybody got this, but uh, this was uh, on yesterday afternoon at 1.49 p.m. And let me say this. I had talked with the pastor prior to this text going out. He did not have his phone, and they had the phone in the room blocked, but I do have my sources. Uh, he says, a hello church family. The surgery went well. I am definitely sore, but thank God I am doing okay. I have not been on my phone because I needed to rest. And the doctors have been amazing. First lady has been also a blessing. They may release me in a few days, but I am resting and following the doctor's orders. Thank God for you and your prayers, and I love each and every one of you. This is an update from our pastor. Thank you. Amen. Let's get a pastor a round hand applause. How about it? And a round hand applause for healing. Healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, healing. I would like to uh, say to uh, my poor pet guest, Minister Don Green, and also to Reverend Johnson, God bless you all, and any other evangelists and ministers might be with us in this ministry of God today. 
All right, I would like to also say, I will not keep you long. This is not a long sermon. But this is, uh, I do have my phone here, so don't think that I'm uh, texting while I'm looking, because uh, I have my Bible app, and this is what I'm preaching from the new, uh, I'm preaching from the, uh, King, not the King James, but the, uh, the uh, new King James Version. Yes, that's, thank you. All right. It is so much a pleasure to be in for the pastor today, and uh, I hope that, uh, and I pray for his speedy recovery, and also would like to say to those of you on Facebook who are with us today, it is indeed our pleasure, and as the pastor reminds us, he reiterates to us that he would like this message to be shared, the word of God with the people of God, okay? So if you're out there on Facebook, please share this message of God. First of all, I want to thank you for being here today because you didn't have to be here. You could be somewhere where no sports is on watching the game, but they're here in the house of the Lord is where I'd rather be. I look out amongst the congregation and I see a lot of beautiful people that have been encouragement and are still encouragement in my life. Some former instructors, uh, the Browns, I, I can just go on, Mr. Wilkins, just educators that have been in my life and got me where I am today. And I'm in pre-retirement. <laughs> so let us get into the word of God. Today we're gonna be coming in from the book of Daniels. And we're going to be uh, in Daniels, and I can share with you that not only Daniels, I'll be going from uh, Daniel 3 to in and out of Daniel 6. So we are going to talk about reality of life. But the message today, I'm going to step right here, and I'm going to keep this microphone right here where you could uh, hear me step down, and every time I step, my steps have gotten a little slow. So I'm, I'm saying that to say that God has a plan for all of us. And uh, I, I used to think back in the day what, uh, what my mama used to say that uh, Arthur came to see me last night and I, I knew no Arthur. I didn't know who she was talking about. So I was thinking that mama had a boyfriend so we had to talk about it, and I said, Mama, who in the world is Arthur? And she told me who Arthur was, and now I know who Arthur is, because I'm dealing with Arthur. Yeah, I'm dealing with Arthur. Today, if you would, please turn your Bible to uh, Daniel. I thought I'd get that out the way, because I know exactly who Arthur is now. Let's go to Daniel uh, 1 through 3. Daniel 3, 1 through 3 in the New King James Version, okay? It's what I'll be reading to you from. Nebuchadnezzar, the king. If you would, please stand for the word of God. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Those of you who are able to stand, please stand. The king made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and his wits six cubits. He set it up in plain Abdura, in the providence of Babylon. And the king Nebuchadnezzar sent word to gather together the, the sad straps and the administrators, the governors, and the counselors, the treasurers, and the judges, and the magistrate, and all the officials of that providence, of those providence to come and dedicate and be a part of his new God, his new God. Today's message, the God I know is so amazing. The God I know is so amazing. You may be seated. So amazing. This is one of the very first verses and scriptures that I 
fell in love with when I started reading and learning the word for myself. It comes from King James 11 and 1, and it goes, Now faith is the substance of things that are hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now what that means is that you didn't know that you were going to get up this morning. I didn't know that I was going to get up this morning. But see, that's the faith that I'm talking about. That's the daily blessing that God wakes us up with. There have been some people that were not as fortunate. And there are some people that are tired. For my mother is tired. I, I, I can tell you she's tired because she has lived a wonderful life. And, and, and right now the predicament that she's in uh, is, is not the life that she lived before. See, she can't get around. She's confined to a wheelchair. But what, what, what it is, is just a miracle of God today that she's still here with me. So I'm, I'm, I'm sharing with you that those of you who still have your mother and still have moments and hours with her, just be thankful to God for those times because God didn't have to do it. God didn't have to wake me up this morning. God didn't have to give me clothes on my back. God didn't have to give me this wife, but I'm so happy what he's done in my life. So I encourage you to, to take the time to thank God for what all he has done and what he's still going to do for you. Today, I'm going to talk about uh, the king, uh, Nezbaniah. The king made an image of gold. Again, I say it was... Actually, I researched it, and it was like 90 feet high, if you take that out of cubics. And he expected people to do what? To honor that God. There is only one God, and, and God is not happy when you have somebody that's trying to make you honor a, a statue or make you honor a God, or make you honor something that they have created, man has created, to be a, a God. See, here, here's, here's, here's the word. Here's the word out of Exodus. Exodus 20 and 3. Thou shalt not have no other God before me. And, and that, that, that's actually the first commandment. That's not another God. How can you put another God before God? See, what you want to do is honor the only God. He lives and he, he gave his only begotten son that we might be able to do what we're doing now. Our sins might be forgiven. Here today, it's plain that the Babylons were actually worshiped. Some, so I can't put them all in the same predicament, but they were worship. They were worshiping that stone, that gold idol, and, and it, excuse me, they were worshiping that God. And, and like I said, there were all the men, the uh, treasurers, the judges, the counselors, the governors who came out and did just what they said. See, the king gave special orders. His special orders was to, when you heard the various different instruments play, like the handheld harp, uh, and, 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 and all the other trumpets and the horns play, then he expected you to bow down. And if you didn't bow down, he had something for you. See, back in the day, there were uh, kings that had no idea that they weren't God. See, the kings would have a, a punishment for you. And that's a punishment like Daniel was in the lion's den. See, that was a punishment for Shadrach, mm -hmm, Meshach, and Abednego. Because they wouldn't bow down to this false god. So what the king did, I, I know this story, everybody know this story. I'm just going to take you to the real point of the story that there's no other god. And, and, and y'all just stay with me for a minute. See, Shadrach was like, 
a youngster, I can imagine, Misha and Abednego said they wasn't going. That's what my kids would say. I ain't going because you want me to worship your God. And so the king, Nebuchadnezzar, I know I told his name, but, but, but a king like that with an understanding like that, his name deserved to be towed up. But, but the way he did this, the way, the way he did this was like, since you guys won't bow down and, and won't uh, worship my God, i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to take you to this fiery furnace, and that's exactly what happened. He had his men, the strongest men he had in his army, to take Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to the fiery furnace. But before he got to the fiery furnace, he turned the thing up. It's already hot enough down here. Can you imagine? He kicked the fire in. The fire was so furious that the fire burned the men that took them down there. So, <laughs> here, here's what I'm trying to get to. The, the fire was so hot that they couldn't stand themselves and, and, and they got burned. And, and, and then uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was still in the midst of the fire when the, when the king decided that he was going to go down and check on them. And he looked up and saw that they were still in existence, that the skin or the hair or the clothing had not been singed. So what happened was there was a protection on the amazing God that we have. So God sent an angel to protect him just like he did in, in, in the Daniel uh, situation where the lions were in the den and some, uh, 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 surrounded all around him. See, now that's got to be nothing but an angel of God for the protection that they receive. And Daniel got that, 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 that protection. So Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had no problem with what the king was doing because they knew who God was. But in the following situation that Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego had to go through, they kept their trust in God. They kept believing that God would deliver them. And the king had no other reason to uh, go and see uh, the, the uh, members of the, the posse, what I would call it, that wasn't going to follow his command. And then they didn't, follow, they didn't fall down on their knees and worship the gold image. I wonder sometimes if they had have done it. I'm so grateful that they didn't. But uh, because that's when you believe in the word of God and you know that he's going to deliver you. I don't care what storm that you're going through. I don't care what phase of life or anything that you see in life that you feel that's a problem. It's not a problem when you turn it over to God. So when God handles it, our biggest problem is... We don't let go. So when, when, you, when you ask God to forgive you, when you ask God to bless your family, when you ask God to see you through this or God to heal you from this illness or the sickness that you're, sickness that you are, are, are going through, then he'll do so. God will not leave you alone. If you look at the situation where uh, Isaac, was a son of Abraham. I'm going to take you there because I'm showing you how God is still protecting us. And when, when you're walking and you're thinking you're walking alone. See, I, uh, Abraham thought for a minute that, hey, Lord, I got to take my only son, my only son, and, and ho hold him up for a sacrifice. And see, what I'm saying, God, at this point, always have a ram in the bush. So if you trust God, if you, if, if you believe in God, don't worry about what man say. If man has an altar a right out there, they put one, of, if the mayor asked me to put one out there in the middle of 4th Street, Martin Luther King, hey, just keep going, man, because it's a way around it. Just take God with you. I'm just trying to make it as simple as I can that there only is one God and thou should not have no other God before God. 
I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to get a bunch of amens. I'm just telling you, if we make the sacrifice for God, and we got to trust him. So all you have to do is trust him, and he will deliver you. Now, let us go back, if I would. Even though we, I got a situation in my job. So when somebody falsely accuses you, what do you do? Do you take revenge yourself? No, you don't. You turn it over to God. See, I had that problem when I first started working for the company I worked for. And, 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 and it was just messy, a bunch of messy old men. Well, that's the worst thing in the world, a bunch of messy old men. So I, I, I couldn't, couldn't fight them. You know, like I said, you heard me coming up the stairs. Uh, I'm hurting. I've had some accidents in my life, but God is still in my life. So what I did with those bunch of old messy men, I turned it over and said, Lord, I don't have nothing to fight these men with and staying out of the state penitentiary. So what I need you to do is take this battle and fight it for me. See, it's a lot of battles that we're fighting and we don't understand that it's not our battle to fight. Just give it to God. If you're in a situation where there's Nothing else uh, seems like it's going to work for you. Just give it to God. If you're in a situation where you're hungry and you don't have the money or you can't pay this light bill, give it to God. God will pay that light bill. God will turn everybody's lights off. There's a lot of y'all think y'all got the light bills. Uh, uh, I mean, if you get up in the morning just because you can. You don't get up in the morning because you can. You can't take, well, I know one thing. <laughs> I know one thing. Public utility of Clark still can't turn the sun on in the morning. Huh? That's nothing but who? That's God. So if you look in the east and what do you see in the morning time? You see the sunrise. That's God. See, when, when you're walking and you think you're walking by yourself, I see my shadow, but I can't see God, but I know what? That's God. So if you want to make it in life, let God lead you. Trust him, believe in him, Oh, I mean, on everything, give God the glory. Give him the praise. Give him the honor. That's all he asks for. God is not a jealous God because you don't support uh, him saying, thank you, Lord, and be the hope, holy thou most Christian. Uh, I, I praise the Lord. That ain't why God loves you. He loves you because you are his creation. We are his creation. God I love him. I don't know what he's seeing me, a wretch like me, but he got a reason for me still being here. See, I didn't just start preaching today. Uh, uh, God had me preaching a long time ago, and I didn't know it because I was doing too much running. So when I finally stopped running and turning over to God and giving him the understanding that I want to be a part of your, uh, uh, your, your, your posse, let me be the one that, that for those that are out there that are having hard times, uh, let me be able to give them the word. See, sometimes that gets me in trouble. A lot of times that get me in trouble with my wife. I'm trying to help everybody. You just can't help everybody. You can pray for them and let God, wait, wait, just pray for them and let God handle it. Because Miss Hines going to have some rocks in her jaws if I help too many folks. So let God. And, and I, I mean that with all sincerity. Let God let go and watch God how he does his work. He's still in the miracle business today. Every time you look around and, and there's something, a new invention, say, but that's another miracle that God has made happen. See, there, there's medicine that, that, that has cured uh, COVID-19. That's a miracle that God has made happen. COVID-19 is a repeat of leprosy. Back in the day, there were diseases that there were no cure for. People died and by the hundreds and by the thousands. Of course, they didn't have any records at that time, but that's the same thing. But then, all you have to do is what they did and where we are right now. Let go and let God. God is amazing. God is so amazing. He, see, I'll tell you what, this is on Facebook, but I'm going to tell you all this. Now, I wouldn't know who let it out. But see, God, I, I, it, my life is like, 
I got a, a daughter incarcerated. I have a son that's facing incarceration. I have problems. My baby girl's house just burned through and through. You know, devil comes at you all kinds of ways. So what, what I'm saying today is sometimes you have to do like they did in the old time days. They had a testimony of, of, of praising and, and, and they had tents where everybody got together and talked about it. And then you didn't have to worry about when you got home that somebody done told what you done told in the church. See, I don't care about y'all going and say I got a daughter or son incarcerated. Because probably some of y'all do too. But, but, so so what, what do you do, uh, uh, Rem Hines? I'm glad you asked. You let go and let God. See... Because uh, her house burned down, that, that was an act of God. I mean, you know, a freak situation also. I mean, but God did what? This very church stood behind my daughter. And I want to say thank you in behalf of y'all for just doing what you did. If it wasn't what you think you wanted to give, it was a whole lot to me. It was a whole lot to my children. But see... My daughter called me about 7.15 from uh, Hines County this morning. And she said, Daddy, I, I, I got a little time to talk. But I, I, I got somebody that wants you to pray for. Them. And I'm thinking, whatever her name is, put her on the phone. So she put the young lady on the phone and I got a chance to pray with her and pray for her family. I don't know what I did for the child, but I know God entered her life through the, through over the telephone. So she needed prayer at that time. You never know when a person needs prayer. So just say, I'm going to pray for you. Don't get it. You're going to tell me don't pray for me. You're going to pray for me. Pray for me. I appreciate it. I, some people prayers you don't want. But, but I'm, just, I'm just saying you don't know, like, uh, I accept all prayers because I accept them in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I accept the prayers in the name of Jesus. I want to say, before I close here, that I am so glad that I let go of all the problems in my life. I can see my shadow right here, but I can't see God, but I know he's with me. I can see my shadow when I turn this way, but I can't see God but I know he's with me. So what, you, what I encourage you to do, that is a very simple thing. There are not a bunch of children or teenagers in here. Have you let, just looked around? Where, where are the teenagers? My mama dragged me to church. How many of y'all mama drag you to church? Sunday school, Bible class, BTU. Let me tell you. We need to take these children, these teenagers, and get these teenagers back in the church. Get them off the street. We have to start this own ministry. Let go and let God, but we can help God. He might not want y'all here, but, you know, he going to help you. He going to just say, Lord, this child... I, I mean, I hate to see somebody when they're standing on the corner and begging and, 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 and giving their body for a, a, a dollar for a cigarette. You know, and, and that could be your child one day. That could be your child. Because you're up today doesn't mean that you're going to be up tomorrow. Because you're up tomorrow don't mean that you're going to wake up tomorrow. See, God... Has, has put this on my heart to let you know we have got to reach out to that young man and other young men like him. He's the, probably the youngest person in here as far, as far as the little bitty children. But what the Bible say? God protects his lambs. So we got to get out there. We got to have a ministry for these children. We have to touch these children and bring them back this way because without you, you, you or I, they are a lost generation. There's going to be no tomorrow for them. There's not going to be no way that we could get them. I mean, every time you look around, they invent a new game uh, that, that's going to shoot somebody. That's a problem. The problem is 
you got to let it go and let God. God is amazing. He can handle this, but we're not asking him to handle this. We are asking God for riches. We're asking God for Cadillacs. We're asking God for a big old house on the hill. That ain't what God is for. God is here to help these children. And the more you help these children, the more you're going to get from God. That's where our blessings come from. God is amazing. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your message. God bless you. God bless you with the word of God, people of God. The doors of the church are open. Except in by Christian experience, letters, you just come on. If you just need prayer, come on down and let us pray with you and for you. And uh, I, I trust everybody in here with your prayers. Everybody in here, prayers are accepted. So if you would, if you need prayer, if you want to come and just rededicate your life to Christ, just come on down. Right now, the doors of the church are open. Did I ask for money? <laughs> Ooh, Lord, have mercy. It got quiet as a church mouth. Except about Christian experience, letters today, it's okay. We have done what God has asked us to do, and uh, there's always room at the altar. Amen? Amen. See, I know the musicians didn't think they were going to be back this soon. <laughs> yeah. But I'm going to go over there and play the drum, the piano myself. <laughs> but let us uh, remember that our pastor, he does a wonderful job. He touched my soul every Sunday. He, he encourages me and, and like he encouraged a whole lot of you. And uh, he, he's, he's, he just... God sent. Well, I had uh, 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 one of my co-workers said that uh, some are called and some are just sent. So we, we, we need this God sent man to have a speedy recovery. So if you would, let us stand up and pray and, and a special prayer for Pastor Kenneth Gooden, if you would. Amen. I'm going to ask our guest minister to come up, and if you would, sir, Minister Green. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. You caught me by a little bit of a surprise, but I'm never surprised in the house of the Lord. I'm just here to tell you this morning that it is no secret what God can do, what He's done for others. He will do for you. And you might say, how you know that, Don Green? Because I know God specializes in things that seem impossible. He can do what no other power can do. Lord, we come to you this morning just to say thank you first. We thank you for all the bountiful blessings you have bestowed upon us individually as well as collectively. Father, we just want to say thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for the pastor, Kenny Gooden, we ask you to go with him and stand by him. Bless him in a manner only you can. Father, we believe in you. We know that you have everything he needs to get well. Father, we just want to thank you this morning. Father, we ask you to go with the members of the church. Let them stick together while their pastor is ill. Let them come and pray for him continuously. Father, you said let prayers continuously come out of our mouths. We just want to say thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for all those that have come around and gathered out this morning. We thank you for the Zetas this morning, Father. We just want to say thank you to them and congratulations to those that are still here serving you. Father, we know that serving you will pay off after a while. And as we live from day to day, we ask your continued strength upon each one of us. We just want to say thank you this morning, Father. Father, we thank you for all the blessings you have bestowed upon. We thank you for the blessing that was seen and unseen. Father, we know that you, without you, we are nothing. But with you, we are everything. 
these blessings we do ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, man. Amen. Amen. Consider yourselves dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. And I want to acknowledge to those Zetas, man. I know a lot of y'all out there. I know a lot of y'all, man. And it's so good to see y'all out here. Thank you so much. Thank you for 